The pig, if I am not mistaken, supplies a sausage, ham, and bacon. What others say his heart is big. I call it stupid of the pig. Hola, geek fans. Welcome back. It's that time again. It's 4.30. It's Friday. And we're shooting at the luxurious Goodrich Studios International. And this is Geeks at the Movies. I'll be your host this evening. My name is Shane Goodrich. And joining me, as always, is our illustrious lead writer, the Mr. J. Benzatels. What's going on, guys? You like that? You uh, yeah. like that intro? Yeah. That's a, that's a good, good introduction right there. All right. So, we got a lot of interesting news I'm going to talk about today. What's oh, the first one? we got more trailers up for you. Yeah. I didn't remember one on the Geek News. The second full trailer for the upcoming Warcraft movie has been released. We saw it. Jacob? Uh, I thought it was a pretty good trailer. Um, it didn't really do that much more to get me excited about it, but it showed us more orc and human action. Gave a little bit more of the story there. Because, you know, we, in the first trailer we got, you know, that the humans and orcs, they don't like each other. They fought, and now they're banding together to fight a common threat. And this one we got a little bit more of that, so I like seeing that. Well, overall, it didn't really do that much. I, I saw that they touched up the effects a little bit. That's what it looked like to me. What did you think? Jacob, uh, I was excited about this film because it was in the same vein as like a Lord of the Rings. Yes. Um, I became more excited by this trailer because I forgot my attachment to Warcraft itself. So I like the, the, the motif of Warcraft. It's similar to Lord of the Rings, which I like. Yeah. But I played the, 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 the original, you know, um, real-time real strategy games yeah. for Warcraft. And when they showed the orc village and they showed the wi human wizards, I started geeking out. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I remember that. That was so cool. Yeah. And it sort of rekindled my passion for seeing this movie. The other images, they did remind me. I mean, I played Warcraft 3 as well. But it wasn't enough. But then I got more and more. I'm like, this is brought to life. This world, this video game is brought to life. I don't know how it is for the people that play the, the uh, MMO, the Massive Multiplayer Online game. It's super popular. Or at least it was super popular. But the, yeah. it looks great to me. Yeah, I, I have no attachment to the video game. I never played World of Warcraft before. But I just think this movie... Or the it, strategy games? Nope. I just think this movie looks... Uh, interesting because it is another fantasy movie and it will if it's successful it will you know launch forward both fa more fantasy movies and more video game movies and may maybe not more fantasy movies because more video game movies. yes because studios don't like to make fantasy movies for some reason anymore but whatever i don't know i do want it to be successful this and um assassin's creed yes yeah. I, my hopes for assassin's creed got lowered after uh Macbeth, which hasn't gotten mm -hmm. more stellar reviews i haven't watched it all yet i yeah. want to get a final opinion it's a little yeah interesting to start we'll see what happens uh but i do want to see video game franchises move forward yeah because we've just gotten horrible video game movie after horrible video game movie the most recent one hitman agent 47 was so bad i fell asleep in the movie theater it was just awful the best video game movie is Mortal Kombat. i know yeah Mortal yeah think Kombat. about think about that movie's garbage really <laughs> yeah it's just fun to watch and all the other ones are they're just bad they're not even fun to watch <laughs> All right, then let's move on to item number two. The first trailer for the mag the upcoming Magnific Magnificent Seven reboot has hit the web. Jacob, why don't you tell me something about this? What's the history of Magnificent Seven? Well, I don't really know because I've never seen the original movie or um, the movie that Magnificent Seven is based off of Seven Samurai. Which I have seen, directed yes. by famed Japanese director Akira Kurosawa. Yeah. This is considered one of his masterworks. Usually it's this in... Uh, ran which we saw yeah We're like oh they battle it out I I'm very excited yeah I'm I thought this uh, trailer was really good it showed it was very action oriented and I I haven't seen the original movie so I don't know what if the tone was the same as as this movie but it um I thought it looked really good you know I really like seeing um, all, all the actors in there Chris Pratt's in here Denzel Washington Ooh. who like starts the whole group he's I guess he's kind of like the leader and it makes sense that he's in there because the director of this movie also directed him in um, other movies like The Equalizer which I heard got good reviews so um, all of that in there with um, they, they got Ethan Hawke too they got uh, Vincent D'Onofrio the guy that played as the, uh, Kingpin. the yeah the Kingpin in the Daredevil series um, he's in there, and he, he has this awesome big beard. It looks like some cabin woodsman. Like, <laughs> so I, I'm sure they're all going to be some really badass characters. I like that they added more diversity to it. It's not just a whole, you know, white cast. They have a Native American character. They have an Asian character. They have a black character. It, it's still mostly, you know, white people, but what are you going to do? So um, I, I'm i looking forward to this movie. I'm hoping that it's not just all action, because I, I do want to see some awesome, you know, Western action, but I want it to be 
like a western too and it's just you know uh, all the best westerns aren't just you know action they have a lot of they have a lot of like an, an emotional story connected to it too i need to see the the original remake of seven yeah. samurai that i want to know what it's like but i love westerns so i'm yeah. excited to see it yeah me too Excelente. Let's move on to item number three. The first trailer for the upcoming film, The Birth of the Nation, has been released. Yes, that title was used before by yes. this propaganda racist film in the mm. 20s, I think. Yeah, by uh, Cecil B. DeMille. Yes. But this yeah. is a new movie about Nat Turner's slave rebellion in the South. Yes. Jacob, I was blown away. Yeah, I, I, I thought this was an awesome trailer. It reminded me a lot of the, the, the first time I saw the uh, trailer for 12 Years a Slave. Yes. And it it yes. has the same exact tone as it in... Same, it's pretty much the same premise. It's about slaves rising up in the South, and I, I, I thought it looked amazing. And this movie got great reviews at, um, I think it was at Sundance that it was shown at, and now it's getting released in October, which is you know the prime time for Oscar bait movies. So much yeah. buzz around this film. Yes, I'm really excited to see this. And uh, Nate Turner, he directed, starred, and wrote this film and produced it too. So. I think if um, this movie is, is as successful as it as we're thinking it's going to be, I think he's going to be a, a huge star after this movie comes out because in, he's also um, in, reportedly in the running for the uh, that Blade reboot that um, we talked about a few weeks ago here. So I think that uh, he's going to be a big star. I think this movie is going to be awesome because it definitely looks great. I love me, myself a good historical drama. Yeah. And you're right, the tone fits 12 Years a Slave. What yeah. I liked about 12 Years a Slave is... They showed reality. Yes. Even with uh, like a miniseries like Ruth and some of these other uh, movies, they often they still kind of they turn away at the last second. Yeah. They don't just show you reality. Twelve Years a Slave. Some of those shots, you're like, okay, is the camera gonna pan? Why are we still watching this? Or yeah. why are we still watching this? Because that was reality. So I like seeing this. You see the the, the white like plantation girl's daughter. Well, like she has the the noose around the black yeah. kid's neck. Her sl yeah. slave. Friend. Yeah, yeah, and um, I, was that a was that Paul Giamatti in there as the like the the main? I, I thought so. Owner? I, I looked like yeah. yeah I, like, I like seeing him out of his uh, rhino suit, but um, yeah, and I, back into his role as twelve from twelve, year, 12 yeah. years a slave. Yeah, exactly. So um, I I'm really looking forward to this movie. I can't wait for October to come now, and this is like the first trailer that we've seen of like you know the the big Oscar movies that they're probably going to be around for next year's Oscars, but um. It kind of shows also that you remember they had the whole controversy about this year's Oscars. You know, Oscars so white. Like, why why are uh, why are all the Oscar you know nominations going towards white people? But in this one, I think this movie is definitely going to be an Oscar contender. It could possibly win the. And it's too early to tell that for now. But it's, I think this is definitely going to be in the running for um, probably best film, maybe best actor. We'll see. They've kind of reorganized the people on, yes. in the Oscars in the, yeah. academy, in the Academy, so it's going to be a more diverse audience. Yes. Because previously it was dominated by m much older folks, many of them who had not been at an active job in the in the industry in yeah. 10 years. Yeah. Why do they? What? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense, really. And I remember um, a few years ago when 12 Years a Slave came out, there were two people who voted for the film and didn't even watch it because they were too afraid to. <laughs> they didn't. They, they was like, oh, it's 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 too too emotional. I don't want to see it. You're in you're in the academy. That's like it's like a huge privilege. You gotta at least watch the film. Yeah. Ex yeah. Oh, yes. That's sad. Uh, and to some people, I I've heard people say, well, sure, the academy's not diverse, but the the outcome is correct. These people are all deserving. Yes. That may be true. I'm like, yes. I don't think we should even argue about that. I yeah. think just let's make it so it's completely transparent and obvious that it's a fair yes. a fair process. So so. The diversity in the actual academy reflects what it's in the movies. Yes, and uh, the real problem though is that there's not enough, you know, diverse roles in Hollywood that, that are being given to these actors, and that's why you know we, we don't see a lot of you know, gods of Egypt. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. That that movie they and the, that, that movie they pre-apologized. <laughs> that that was so, embarrassing. Yes. And no they, they, they they were embarrassed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So. Um, I think this movie is going to be awesome. Definitely looking forward to seeing it and seeing Nate Parker's performance in it. Yes, I'm very much looking forward to this. Now let's move on to item number four, the geek news. According to The Hollywood Reporter, Robert Downey Jr. will appear as Tony Stark in Sony's upcoming Spider-Man Homecoming. However, the same day, Deadline reported that Michael Keaton, who was reported to be in talks to play the building in the upcoming film, has now dropped out of the project. He's not playing Vulture! Mm. Ah! We're not going to get to see a bald Michael Keaton flying around, but I'm very uh, disappointed. <laughs> yes, me too. But I am excited that Robert Downey Jr. is going to be in the movie. Uh, I think that's, I, I think it's awesome. You know, he's probably going to, you know, 
ba he's probably gonna bang Aunt May and then be Peter's new uncle. But uh, I, yeah, um, I do think that it's a it's definitely a good idea to get him in this movie because star you know, power. Yes, and it's star power, and they want to you know further the connection to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So. Um, he's probably going to be a, a very small role. Like he's probably going to be a Spider-Man size role from in Civil War. It's a, it's probably going to be that type of deal. And uh, if for uh, going as far as Michael Keaton is concerned, I was I'm a little disappointed because you know they they gained one star then lost another. He probably just you know didn't want. He probably they probably just couldn't figure out a deal that that worked for him. Um, or he probably or maybe he read the script and was like this is god awful and then threw it away. But um, <laughs> but. Is probably the the former. So um, I it, hopefully they will get someone. And I actually don't want to see Vulture on screen. <laughs> He's too stupid. It, yes, and like, <laughs> e even if they update him, like it'll just like lose all. Like it, it, they might as well just have another character in there. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like so, I think they could. I think they should should even though it's third time, I think they should get a Green Goblin character in there. But make it work this time, and don't have you know don't don't have it be. Uh, Harry Osborn, be, have it be Norman Osborn, and I don't know. I, I was really disappointed by uh, Dane DeHaan's performance as Green Goblin in Amazing Spider-Man Two because it. I was actually really excited for it because he looked just, just like insane. He wasn't. He didn't have a mask covering his face like like uh, Willem Dafoe in the uh, original Spider-Man movie. Who did look yeah. insane without his mask? Yes. <laughs> and so, so he looked really crazy, and then they just shoehorned him in at the last second to have that whole. Gwen Stacy scene at the end, which was really good. It was like the best part of the movie, but it was just so shoehorned in. So I, I want just one villain. You don't have to have three villains, Sony. You've learned that twice now. Just have one villain, have it be the main focus of the movie, and then you're, you're golden, probably. Hopefully. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that ex I don't really care, yeah. I guess. You know, I'm not a big Iron Man fan. Yeah. Hope, I hope uh, Captain America kicks his ass in Civil War. We know that. We know that Tony Stark's not going to die now. <laughs> but I, I, I knew that already. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, cool. Yeah. But you know, it'll be, it'll be interesting because it'll tie the universes together. Yes. That's cool. The character itself, eh? I, yeah. I could do. I, you gave any other uh, Avenger? Yeah. Put anyone in there? Ant Man? Yeah. Oh, I don't even care. I'll be like, okay, it ties it together. Yeah. It it it, it makes a little bit more sense with. Uh, Iron Man because you know the Avengers Tower is yes. in New York City and spider mans you know he's swinging around New York City probably you know got some security notices after swinging onto the Avengers Tower a few times but, Will we see any okay random random question time will yeah. we see any webs in Daredevil or Jessica uh, Jones I We will probably get a slight reference, but we won't get any like name drops or any like we might even get like a newspaper clipping because that, that's what oh, they, that, that's what they love to do in their shows. They're fake connected. They're not really connected. I, I know, I know. It, it's it's really disappointing. There was one report. Uh, one one of the characters that's going to be in Luke Cage might be in Civil War. Um, like she's probably just might. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one of the care. Yeah, one, one minor character might be in Civil War. That that's the huge connection. Yeah, that's it. And they never even say anything like in in Daredevil season two they didn't even have any uh, like references to Sokovia in from Avengers two or anything <laughs> they, they they were still referencing the first Avengers so yeah they they don't uh, there's a huge disconnect between the television and movie universes and it's probably not going to get connected anytime soon yeah. if it's not connected I wish they'd just be separated so they can go yeah. in their own creative direction well movies yeah. are, movies already do yeah. that but yeah. the shows are, are a little more they're bound by the movies yeah I just want to see. Uh, I just want to see, like, at least, like, have Matt Murdock on, on TV screen in the background right. in a movie or something. Just something little now like that. Now time for oh. item number five of the Geek News. Universal has confirmed that director J.A. Bayona mm -hmm. will direct the upcoming sequel to Jurassic World. Jacob, Jurassic World was, to me, a f kind of a mess. Yes. Are you excited about this? I, I'm, I'm a slightly excited because uh, I, I was medium on, on Jurassic World. I didn't think it was... A complete failure, but I didn't think it was great either. I thought it was just right in the middle, pretty much, because it had, had some good things, had some really bad things as well. But um, for as far as the sequel goes, uh, I don't think that I I don't, I don't really like the direction that it looks like they're going because it looks like they're going for you know dinosaurs taking over the world because that's where it kind of left off with uh, Jurassic the first Jurassic World because 
it, they had they're the, militarizing the dinosaurs. Yes, they're and they're doing some weird like gene splicing. Thing. Maybe they actually could attach lasers to the dinosaurs, then yeah. ride them. I, that, I, I'd be excited then. I had some little <laughs> toys. I can't remember the cartoon. It was an AIDS cartoon, and they rode dinosaurs with lasers. It was yeah, awesome. Do that. Have Chris Pratt riding a, a Velociraptor with laser <laughs> on his head. There you go. But um. Yeah, uh, speaking of Chris Pratt, though, him and the actress uh, in the first one, I can't remember her name, they're coming back to this. Um, didn't get the same director. He's working on Star Wars Episode Nine right now. And he had a very... he All of his films have a very lighthearted tone, which I thought fit with what they were going for in Jurassic World. And J.A. Bayona, he, I haven't seen any of his films, but I've seen the trailer for his uh, upcoming movie, uh, Monster Calls. And that looks very dark and like very... It, it, I think it's, it's um, going to be like a PG type of movie, but it has a very uh, dark, like gothic feel to That's it. That's a low budget film. It, it's a yeah, it, it's definitely lower. It's it's not like a big blockbuster film, but it's it's a little bit more than a uh, like independent film as well. Um, but uh, I like the way that that looks. So if he can bring some of that to dress the Jurassic World sequel, I think it could work. But I don't really like, I don't I don't I don't really like the way that dark and gritty goes with. Jurassic World because all the Jurassic um, Park movies have had like that there's really like intense scenes like at night like in the first movie the in the rain the rain scene with, with the with the uh, T-Rex like awesome was, yeah note. yes all, all of that was really good but um, I overall all of the movies have had a, a like c kind of a, f a fun tone to them the first one didn't yes the first yeah. one was quite yeah. was much darker yeah and they kind of abandoned that and went sillier and campier and I don't like yeah. that direction yeah well, the, I, and don't bring the T-Rex yeah. into the city. Yes, exactly. But in, in the first one, though, um, what I liked about that movie was it had like a lot of wonder to it. And oh, they, yeah. And, and they tried to put that into Jurassic World, and it worked a little bit, but they, they tried to add in all those you know references and everything, and they just put them in all, like, all over the place and it didn't work. Did, yeah. I just thought this right now, to be fair to the director, part of that wonder was, how did they do this? Yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a dinosaur. Yes. How, <laughs> what? And, and now you can't replicate that. Yeah, you can just do you can show anything now, and, and people people are just like, yep, yeah. it's a dinosaur. There yeah. you go. But um, so so he definitely had a, a big task ahead of him, and I think that Jay Bayona will too, because it, he, he's not to worry about the, the movie making money because it's going to make a lot of money. It's not apparently. Pro yeah, it's, it's probably not going to make you know as much money as the first Jurassic World. I don't think they they can replicate that again. But it's going to make a ton of money. So um. He, he doesn't have to worry about that. If they made it good, though, I think they could beat uh, the original Jurassic World. I it, wish they would do that. I wish they yes, would yeah. not make it so silly, yeah. take it a little more seriously. And, and they, they come up with all these weird ideas, having, you know, militarizing the dinosaurs. Oh, this, this doesn't make any sense. I uh, Something that could work is if they put them on a, an, another island, have them, like, take over that island and have the, um, like, Chris Pratt's character go in there to help all the people out that are there. So, something like that, but I don't want dinosaurs to take over the world that that's not jurassic park to me right but yeah that wouldn't fit with the series but now it's jurassic world and maybe it does fit with the series yeah uh, we'll see what happens but i'm not really that excited right now now on to item number six yes. according to the hollywood reporter william defoe has been cast in the upcoming justice league part one as an unspecified good guy yes his so, quotes yes uh because um oh, a lot of people have been saying that you know he's probably going to turn evil at the end but i i, I kind of tend to believe um warner brothers right now that he's go just going to be like a good guy at least for the first justice league film um a lot of people are saying that he could be a, a batman character because um he's the second uh he's the second actor from the sam raimi spider-man movies that have joined this movie now because they got jk simmons as commissioner gordon as um in this movie as well so uh, he, he could also be a batman villain but I don't. You don't get Willem Dafoe in a in a superhero movie just to play like a regular character. So I don't think he's gonna be like some congressman or some or some or, dude. Yeah, just some dude going around. I think he's gonna be an actual character from the comic books. So, um, but I don't really know any like good guys that he could play. Like he, maybe um, maybe Harvey Bullock, the um, the uh, the. Uh, Deputy to um, Commissioner Gordon. And that guy was fat. Yes. He, so how could he possibly play the guy that's I, gaunt I, and super I, skinny? I, I know. In, in, uh -huh. in Gotham, he isn't really fat, but oh. I, don't, I don't know. They, they, that they, when he's young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. They, it's they, a show without Batman. It's a Batman show without Batman. And now he's really old. But um, <laughs> so I, I don't know. Maybe it'll be. Um, 
it, it could be someone like Two Face. He he fits that that character mold, I think, pr pretty well. Um, so you could play Harvey Dent and then turn into Two Face in Justice League Part Two or a Batman movie, something like that. But um, I'm just excited that he's in he's in this movie because uh, so, something that the DC Cinematic Universe hasn't had a problem with is putting talent in their films because they, they they put all these great actors in there and they, they usually deliver great performances. It's just that the the movies don't always turn out that great. Because I, I loved Man of Steel, and I thought that Batman v Superman was a disappointment, but it wasn't, it, I didn't think it was terrible. I, so, I still enjoyed watching the film. So now for Justice League Part 1, I'm a little bit disappointed that Zack Snyder is returning as the director, but he's there. But I, I think that um, Warner Brothers trust him to like be kind of like the, the I guess, the Kevin Feige of this new um, DC Cinematic Universe. Made them money. Yeah, he's, he, he definitely, it, like, he built this world, so they want to ha um, have him stick around for a couple more films, at least. I want him to stick around. I like the movies. They, yeah. I like them. I enjoyed them a lot. I mean, yeah. I, I, I've been re I've been binge rewatching some yeah. scenes from Batman v Superman, yeah. from Man of Steel. Yeah. He, he's able to bring to life Superman in a way I've never, I always hate Superman, I never liked him. Yeah. And part of the reason I realized I never liked him is because I couldn't believe in him. Yeah. I couldn't, but now that I see him on screen, getting hit by a nuclear bomb point blank. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good. I just gotta take a knee for five. Yeah. What? It's <laughs> awesome. He really is Superman. Yeah, yeah. Um he I I do like And how, he's how really he's, Batman. The ba his Batman, yes. we'll talk about that later. It's, it's Batman. Yes, I, I really like how he brings the characters to life. I just think it's the story yeah. that, that has problems with. And if he couldn't handle two characters being brought to life, I don't know how he can Three. handle or or seven uh -huh. if it's the whole Justice League. So we'll see what happens there. But I'm going to I'm gonna look forward to it, but just because it's a the first time we've seen the Justice League on screen together, so I'm definitely going to be excited for that just automatically. I I am psyched so much for this movie. I want to see I want to see all the Justice League. I want to see Cyborg. I want to see Wonder Woman. I want to see the Flash. Yes. I'm I'm still hoping there's a kind of the thing where like Superman they might they might end up doing this with not with the I can't I can't reveal what happened at the end of Man of Steel yeah. of the Batman v Superman, but it didn't happen anyway. Yeah. We all know that. Yes. But nothing major happened, and I kind of was wondering if it would lead to the point where there was a, a time period where they didn't have their best guy. Yeah. And then the Justice League kind of fighting it out, and they're all super powerful, and they're showing them individually in their movies are super yeah. powerful. And they're all no, we're all on the verge of uh, of, of doom because of uh, what's the guy's name? Dark Side. Yeah, Dark Side. And Superman comes in. Oh yeah, yeah baby, it's. <laughs> But what what happens though if Darkseid's like, oh no, now I can't see my mother again, Martha, and then Batman's like, we have to help him. <laughs> I, 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 Clever I, ploy, Darkseid. Yeah, I, I didn't really like that that Martha thing, but I I did. It, 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 I liked it. It, it. it made sense for 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 the movie. I just thought it could have been executed a little bit more well. But yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I I am gonna look forward to. Justice they had problems, League. a lot of problems. Yeah, I, I am looking forward to Justice League, and I think something like that is exactly what's going to happen in the movie. Uh oh, now it is time for us. We're going to part of the show that we like to call. Oh, Geek Talk. You I got it off. You aimed it. You I aimed know, it. I had to. This is where we talk about anything from the Geek first. Today we're talking about the Dark Knight himself. Like yes. Batman. Yes, we're talking about Batman. Let's say Kate Crusader. Is he the Kate Crusader? I don't know. The Superman? Yeah, that, that's Superman, I think. But I don't know. But, anyways. um... We're talking. I'm, I want to talk about the more of the iter different iterations of Batman we've seen, all the way from Adam West to Bat Nipples to Bat Fleck. So, um, to I, non Bat in Gotham. Yes, yes, exactly. Just little kid Bruce Wayne. But um, I, um, the first Batman that I saw was Michael Keaton's Batman in the original Batman movie, and then again in Batman Returns, which. I, which I liked better than the first Batman movie. Batman I mean, Returns, you like better? Yeah, I like seeing uh, Danny, De Danny DeVito as the Penguin. Have you seen that movie recently? No, but I want I, I want to see it again just because... Uh, just because really of, cheesy. I, I know it is, just because of Danny DeVito and um, Michelle Piper as, as Catwoman. They look right for the roles. Yes. And so um, that, that was my first, uh, I guess, um, uh, exposure to Batman as a character. And I didn't really... I really liked comics when I was growing up, and I, I still do now, obviously, but I never really read any uh, Batman comic books growing up. But now, um, uh, I, I definitely, like, I, I remember it was like, when I was like 15 or something, I just like got into this huge Batman phase where I just read all these comics. We have one right here, actually. Ooh. This is one of the more recent ones. I don't know what they're doing now in the DC comic book world. It doesn't make any sense anymore, because they just reboot everything like every five years now but this is something more recent it's different it's like a uh 
it's zero year, so it's like a uh, different updated origin story for Batman, I guess. So but it'll all be superseded by another one in like a couple yes, years. Yes, and I'm pretty sure it already has because <sighs> they they rebooted it again. Oh. But anyways, um, so I, I got into this huge Batman phase, read all these comics and everything, and then I saw the Nolan Batman films. Well, I already seen like the first one, but then the Dark Knight came out. Oh yeah, and they... I was like, oh man, but. I, I really like those movies, but now thinking about it, like afterwards, it's like it was just a guy in a bat suit running around beating up mentally ill, po Ill people the entire time. Oh. But so, but um, I'm hoping that they take a little bit more of a comic book route in the newer films. It looks like definitely it looks, looks like, like they, they have. Yes, definitely looks like they have powered up Batman. Yes, that's got kicking ass. Yes, and so I I I do think that Batfleck is the best Batman we've seen so far. He's a total badass. They took. So much stuff from the Arkham games, which is another big part of my whole huge Batman phase I had. I love those games. The fighting style is is like right out of that game. Just him r rushing into a, a room full of people with guns, him taking out the guns, and then taking out the people. So I really love seeing that. And then the Batmobile scenes from Batman v Superman. Awesome. He, he just he just kills people. He just runs them right over. In, in the um. In the games, like, they make up like excuses like, oh, he has a shark, a, 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 a shock barrier around his car, so when he hits people, they just go flying out of the way. They're they're dead. <laughs> they're dead. <laughs> and and like he can he can like smash people's faces in, into concrete. Oh yeah, they're fine. They're, Everything's and, good. No yeah, brain trauma there. Yeah, no, nothing's <laughs> going on there. But in in these new movies, he just kills people, and it, honestly, it makes more sense. It makes more sense to just have him just murder people, I guess. But it, oh, let me stop you. I got, I got to go on a little okay, rant here. Yes. Okay, so a lot of people have been saying Batman is now a murderer. Now, I will, there is one problem I have with the new Batman is morality. But overall, what I see Batman doing is he's going to combat and he's fighting people. Yeah. All those people were trying to kill him. Yes. If you started, if you if you went crazy and started to kill me and I killed you, that's yeah. not murder. Yeah. That's self-defense. Yeah. Or if you're going to a war zone, it's a combat. It's a different thing. Yes. Batman's and, going into a war zone. He needs to fight these people. Yeah. He never kills anyone once he has them captured, but... There is one flaw to this. He brands people, and I was thinking about this because yeah. I was defending him. I was defending his comic book morality completely. This new morality Batman has, but I can't defend the branding because they've been captured. Now they're contained. It's kind of odd. You know, he's not threatening you anymore. Yeah, I think he was just trying to spread uh, spread a message. I think that that was that part. Like the Batman is back, and he's right. He, he's not going to take any prisoners. Oh, I mean, yeah. Well, I'll make like, any bullshit excuse yes. so I can yes. you know make, make things work for me. Yes. But I'm just saying that. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, that pushes it. Yeah, that that was a little odd. I thought. Um, I think, him fighting back in combat. What does he could do? Yeah, doesn't make any sense. Yes. Yeah, so, so um, uh, but one thing that I did notice that he never really killed anyone that he didn't have to. Right. Exactly. Because th there's, there's that whole scene I was just talking about where he was like fighting through that room of people. He didn't kill. He didn't kill most of them actually. He exactly. Just, that's yeah. what I'm saying. He used proportional force. Yes. He, if he, he used what he, he used enough force to stop them. Yes. And sometimes that was lethal force. Yes. Well, <laughs> and you're, you're in the middle of combat. Yes. And but that 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 um the whole Batman Batmobile scene was a little <laughs> over the top though because he takes a car he crashes into a car kills the people takes that car flips it onto <laughs> another car to kill other people. It's, that was a little crazy, but I love seeing it. I'll try to kill him there in those yes. scenes too. Yes. Uh, so. Um, Batman's morality has definitely changed in these new movie iterations, but I do think that it, it works for um, th this new feel that Zack Snyder has set up in the uh, DC Cinematic Universe. Um, Want to go back in time a little bit for to the uh, mm -hmm. yes to um, to George Clooney Batman and Batman. Ah, and I know. No, it, why did it, you do it, this it, to me? It burns. It burns. I know the the bat the bat no the bat credit card. Oh. The, everything in that movie is just totally ridiculous. We um, we actually talked about this movie before, and we just went into a whole, whole rant about how horrible it is. They just and, camp it up. Yes, they they camped it up, and even more so than they did in the '60s version. They're, they're trying to they're trying to capture that again. It and, was similar to the '60s version. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't think that they didn't do the powers, yeah. but that, some of it was so. They didn't just, have they didn't have them dancing like they do in that. Movie. But for our time period, it was about as camped up as you can imagine. Yes, and it didn't work at all. And I never actually seen any of the Adam West stuff. I've seen like little clips. Like there's this part where he climbs up the bat ladder onto the bat helicopter, and a shark bites shark attack. Yeah, yeah, and he, and he, has, he has shark repellent. And <laughs> um, I watched as a kid a few times, but I don't remember anything about yeah, it. Yeah. So um, th there's been a lot, and um, the new, the next one we're gonna get is Lego Batman. Who he, they're making their own Lego Batman movie, and I actually I loved 
the the trailer that the they trailer had. was good. I saw yeah, it. Yes, because they showed they showed all, all the all the iterations of Batman, and they, and they they had a shot of the bat nipples in it. So I, I love that. So um, I'm really looking forward to that movie too. Um, but and but mostly though, I'm looking forward to see more of Ben Affleck as Batman because he is the the the, the Batman that, that I wanted to see on screen pretty much ever since you know they they announced that they weren't going to make any more Christian Bale Batman movies. Jacob, I love Nolan films. Yes. I thought I thought that was the iteration of Batman that truly brought Batman to life. Yes. But I like this new Batman, this new Ben Affleck Batman. Yeah. And here's some things that, that they had to break the rules on that they kind of, morality was one of them. There's a couple other things. I did read some uh, Batman comic books when I was younger. And I actually went along with some of these tropes. So the fact that he didn't kill people, I was like, yeah, that makes sense. Not really yeah. thinking about it. Another trope they had, he always wears spandex. Why? Because it makes him more agile, so he doesn't need to wear a body armor. <laughs> Yeah. What does make sense? And he's just a normal dude who just works out a lot. Yes, a lot. <laughs> but he, in this movie, he does things that are superhuman. Yes, he like he, he takes a, a crate and throws it. Well, across it doesn't make the any room. sense. <laughs> like, that's you know, yes. That's a, it's like Captain America yeah. do something like that. Yeah. You need to be enhanced. Yeah, and was, speaking of um, Captain America, and those those all of those people, Captain America, uh, Hulk, um, Iron Man, they kill people too, and no, yeah. no one ever complains about that because they, they didn't have a problem with it in the comic books. Right. Yeah. So it's a sh- it's a shallow morality uh, you often see. You often see this in films and movies. They try they try to add this element. Like I felt that this with uh, The Walking Dead with Morgan. Oh, life is precious. Yes. But it's like if you've ever bothered reading into philosophy or ethics or. It's like this is kind of this is like so it sounds good. Yeah. It's, it's mean. It's fluff. Yeah, it it, it definitely doesn't need to be there. I, right. It just it so, doesn't add it doesn't add enough. Yeah. So uh, I I like the new iteration of Batman. The only thing that I'm disappointed about was that I liked that um they got Jeffrey Dean Morgan to play as Thomas Wayne in the um in, in the the opening scene there um and uh I if you we like remember that um movie I made you watch the uh, animated movie um. Uh, Flashpoint Paradox, yes. where they had they had uh, Thomas Wayne as Batman because yes. Bruce Wayne dies and, and instead, of, instead of his parents, and he's a murderer. Like he he he's a, he, he kills people in that in that movie. So I was excited to see like he's quite like, brutal in that movie. Yeah, so I, I, I mean, he carries a gun to yes, shoot people. Yeah, so I I wanted to see in the future have Jeffrey Dean Morgan play, play as that version of Batman and have him kill people. But now we have a Batman that kills people anyway, so it doesn't really work that well. But but in that, but still, he's still taking it farther though. That film, yeah. he's, he's, he has a gun to shoot, shoot people. Like yeah, he's yeah. like Punisher. He's, yeah, he's judge, jury, and executioner. There's yeah. no chance. Redemption. Yeah, yeah, he actually has guns in that movie. And Batman still doesn't carry like bullet guns. But that, but didn't he have them on uh, his dream? Yeah, yeah, and in his dream scenes, maybe he's becoming more like that right. character in, in in that sequence of the movie. So see, they have all these references that people aren't gonna get if you don't. Yes. you know what I mean. Yeah, like, huh? yeah, I I loved it, but the average movie going is gonna just be like, what the hell was? That. that like I remember my, my friend who who actually still knows a lot about this was still like what was going on in that scene I didn't understand that but um but overall for our for the the comic book fans I, I I'm I think that um that they're going to stick to that that thing and have it be very comic booky very have a lot of Easter eggs and references so I'm excited for it to see that I know that a lot of people aren't going to get it but. Too bad for it doesn't always take away from him, <laughs> yeah. and I hope they put more Batman in. They, they already announced another Batman solo Batman film. Yeah, yeah, they, they they've officially announced that. Now. Yeah, I, yeah. I want more Batman. I like Batman as a character, and I was really apprehensive when I heard he's going to be in this movie originally, Batman v Superman. I was like, at first I kind of got angry, and then I went, oh well, they have the Nolan films; they'll always be there for me. Yes, because like, this just doesn't make sense. But they made it actually believable, credible. Yes, and it, it, they only did that because I th- I think that's the the point of these new modern movies make them modern and have them be updated ha- have them have them have armor have them you know um k- kill people i guess i because that that makes more sense just have everything make more sense but you know you have to it's hard when you're when you're bringing this to life comic books to life you're usually just looking at it through a pay a piece of paper and you know drawings yes you can just draw anything and be like okay I'm, yes. i'll go with it and you don't think too much and also comic books generally aren't too in depth they the story moves quickly yes so you're not harping on a point for a certain period of time where it's like, wait, it doesn't make any sense if you think about it. It's yeah. a fast moving pace. Yeah. So you've got to alter certain certain elements. Yeah, certain elements that, uh, definitely need to be altered because the things that work on the page do not always work on screen. Right. So um, I, I'm i going to be looking forward to see more of Ben Affleck on screen because he definitely is the iteration of Batman that I've been looking for. for oh yeah, time. I want more Batman, more Batman, more Batman, but sadly I can't get more Batman right now because it's that part of the show where I start to cry. Oh. Tell them where we get more geeks. You can find all of our uh, geek content on 
our YouTube channel at Geeks of the Movies. We have so much uh, exclusive content there, all a, def a bunch of short reviews, short videos, and then you can find all of our uh, full episodes on there as well. You can also like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Geeks at the Movie. Drop the S. Remember, we're on Charter 192 and CBC 5, 4.30 every Friday. We're in the Eastern Connecticut area. Uh, write in the comments below if you maybe want to be a guest, uh, do some stuff with us. You live in the Willamette area. We want always want to hear from you. You can email us at geeksofthemovies.ct at gmail.com. Anyways, my name's been Shane Goodrich. This is... Jacob Desitos. And we're in Beaks of the Movies. Did I say Beaks of the Movies? Yeah. <laughs> All right, Kyle, we're going to talk for a little bit. So thrilling, so exciting. Yes. It... Have you finished all the, all the seasons that are, that are finished? Are you up to date? Of what? Everything. What, the stuff that oh. we're supposed to be watching? Yeah, so I, yeah, I'm up to date except for I haven't watched the most recent episode of Arrow because I, I like to put that off because I don't like watching. It. <laughs> <gasps> That's good. <laughs> All right, geek fans, it's that time again. It's, wait, what? It's on. I got worried that I didn't put that image that you can see it.